I'm certainly aware that the one opportunity I have to pick the right director and the right set of designers is that it's going to evolve because they're brilliant. The whole play is precipitated by an event, by the death, well, a little time ago, by uh, Olivia's dad, and then more recently, and we're going to assume very recently, by her brother. So suddenly this entire household is disrupted and changed. People that were central to it suddenly don't know where they belong. People who could rely on being important suddenly are terrified that they might be peripheral. There's such a range from, of ache and danger. A place so rich in character, rich in event. Rich in comedic sequence, I believe, if you don't go chasing after it desperately, but let it happen. Because the story is wonderful, the relationships are wonderful, and the poetry is sublime. I think if I have the right director, it's going to go somewhere I could not have imagined. And that is why we do it. That's why we pick plays and say, I have a feeling this play, this play speaks to this director. Yes, we get to glimpse into the glamorous, chaotic, eccentric, drama-filled lives of the Cavendish family, where there is tremendous wit and humor. Those playwrights knew how to write a joke. But they also, at the heart of this play, there is a really interesting and quite real dilemma. In the course of the play, begin to question whether this life is worth it. Is it worth it to have a life in the theater? Well, one of the things that I'm most excited about is that I'm doing this play in this place, on that stage, up that hill, with these people. Talk about a royal family. The idea that there's a possibility you don't know where it's going and you get to be there to watch it unfold and see those struggles and see those, those incomplete answers be lived out through the end of their, the story, I think that that's, that's, that's beautiful. It's one of the most personal stories I've ever read. There's so much backstory and history that goes into this. This is 30 years of civil war. Everybody, I mean, the, the man with the pike that has no lines has been affected by this story. And that, that play at that moment is about him as much as it is about Richard. And I know if, if we attack this with this, that kind of rigor um, and we make it personal, then we'll also make it human. And if it's human, then, it, then, then it's plausible. And if it's plausible, then I know that it, it can actually move people. It will be really powerful. And I think that's a, gr a great journey for us to take and to see how all the other characters in this place support that story. I, either by pushing against Richard and not making it easy for him to do this. He's not the puppet master. He's not, hey, watch me do this, and he does it. He's going to try and do this, and I hope he succeeds. And, and that we see him kind of birth himself on the stage. I think the directors, designers, when we get the cast in place, the evolution is absolutely apparent to me that it's going to happen. What I don't know it's going to evolve to <laughs> is the exciting part. Personally, I find the fantastical Admirable Crichton to be a natural fit for this particular theater located on his very own island in a vast ocean of elms and oaks and prairie grass. And I am personally delighted to be able to rediscover this play almost a half century later with some of my most cherished theatrical colleagues who continue to both expect and demand the very best of me. The Admirable Crichton is a play that I simply adore, a perfect combination of fantasy and whimsy and warmth and extraordinary imagination that could only have come from a man who also gave us Peter Pan. Their imaginations and their craft of storytelling is going to expand that idea. I have said several times that Troilus and Cressida meet at the corner of humanity and myth. At the heart of this story are two young people who believe that their youth and their love matters. Shakespeare reminds us that every single day, war obliterates that notion. Sorry, kids. I can't wait to get to APT and start rehearsals for this messy, extraordinary play, and I can't wait to see you all. Love, Phil.
my career in the theater continues to confirm that everything we, as human beings, experience is personal. Art is personal. It strikes a very personal chord, but it suddenly makes you connect it. But what really makes it clear, first and foremost, is a very personal relationship with, with those words. And I just don't think that kind of experience it happens anywhere else. I think it only happens in the theater, in live theater. That can change right now in front of you. You don't know what's gonna happen next. You didn't read the end of the play, even though you think you know the end of the play, not with these actors, not with this director, not inside of this world. That's beautiful, that's theater, that's life. So, I'll do it every day. Ha, 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 ha.